In the Perspectrum podcast, we discuss controversial topics. Outside of this context, Michael and I are both working professionals. While doing the show, we are not acting as agents or representatives of our respective institutions. And none of the views that we express reflect the outlooks of our employers. So don't come to my office and throw toilet paper at me. And I don't have an office, but don't come to my cube. the Perspectrum. I'm Michael Bloom. And I'm Nathan Seelove. Tonight we have a super exciting, fun episode for you. For our first segment, we're basically doing a shit conservative say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, and, it's another it's another check-in of, hey, conservatives, are you okay? We're, we're yeah. worried about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for our second segment, we are talking about the Twitter files because we can't not Mm. Um, and for our last segment, we're going to be talking about human, like evolutionary psychology and, and its relationship to like individualism versus collectivism. Mm. That sounds super intelligent and smart. <laughs> well, when you say it that way, we're going to be like, uh, human brain good for, <laughs> for working together. <laughs> mm. Speaking of, uh, making things sound smarter than they are. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Michael, what are the COVID numbers? <laughs> Great. So worldwide at this point, we've hit 655 million total cases with a seven-day average daily cases uh, of 484,000, which is actually way up from two weeks ago when we were at 381,000. So about 100,000 new cases, more more new cases per day than there were two weeks ago. Um, in terms of death, we've hit 6.66 million total deaths worldwide with a seven-day average daily deaths of 1,343, which is also um, up pretty significantly from a couple weeks ago uh, when we were at 1,090. In terms of vaccination, 68.6% of the world's population has at least one dose, and 63.1% are fully vaccinated. In terms of the U.S., we've hit 101 million total cases, with average daily new cases over the last seven days of 44,000, which is actually nearly double where it was two weeks ago, when we were about 22,000, which is crazy. Um, in terms of death, we've hit 1.11 million total deaths, with average daily deaths over the last seven days of 278, which is up from 177. In terms of total vaccination in the U.S., we've hit 80.5% of the population with at least one dose and 68.9% that are fully vaccinated. So pretty much all of the numbers are going in the wrong direction this week. This, this week. Mm. Yeah. It sucks. You know what else is going in the wrong direction, Michael? America. <laughs> Specifically the American right wing. Yeah. Well, fair enough. <laughs> they just keep going more right. Yeah. Yeah. More right. So for our first segment, we are diving into, a, like, there were just too many stories over the yeah. last couple of weeks that we just had to talk about. Um, and so we yeah. thought we'd bundle them up. And some of them are kind of ass hatty, Some of them are D-baggy. Uh, yeah. And we thought we would just bundle them up into, like, you know, another crazy shit republicans say are you guys okay like is that like blink twice if someone's holding a gun to your head <laughs> yeah yeah no what was funny was th this originally came about because i w when we had our prep conversation i was specifically telling michael oh i got an idea for asshat this week mm -hmm. actually i have like 15 different ideas for <laughs> asshat this week and as we kept going through each of them we were just like you know what we just got to make this a whole segment yeah because there's just some weird shit that has happened this week that we just we just have to talk about for sure. Um, and not, and actually even beyond this week because we we were off last week, mm -hmm. so this this includes stuff from this week and the previous week. Yeah. So first off, we gotta talk about the only black Nazi that I've ever heard of in my entire life. I didn't think it was possible yeah. to be a black Nazi, but apparently it's possible to be a black Nazi. Yeah, I mean, um, another way that Kanye is really innovating. That is true. That <laughs> is <laughs> now, innovation doesn't have to be good, people. It can be that bad. is true. <laughs> yeah. So Technically, robots taking over the Earth would be innovation. <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't know if we got a chance on the pod to talk about the interview that Kanye West had with Alex Jones, mm. but um, Alex Jones 
interviewed Kanye West. And Alex Jones wasn't the most extreme person in that interview. Alex Which Jones, is... I will take it a step further. Alex Jones was the guy I was cheering for. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking cr- <laughs> Alex Jones of like recording his aneurysms live. Yeah. And, like a show just full of conspiracy theory bullshit. Alex Jones of being uh, like assessed like over a billion dollars in damages for defaming the parents of Sandy Hook victims. That Alex Jones. Yeah. The Alex not Jones the that said. On that call. The Alex Jones that said that the government was putting chemicals into the water to make frogs gay. Yeah. That exactly. Alex Jones. The Alex Jones that when he got banned from YouTube, he did this weird segment where he wore a donkey mask and talked about how like the communists were invading America. Mm-hmm. And he did this really weird like guttural like, and they will come on our shore. Like he he went on this whole weird rant. That Alex Jones, he was the guy who was the sane one. Mm-hmm. He was the guy who I thought was making reasonable arguments as he was trying to calm down Kanye West. Yeah. Fucking crazy. So Kanye decides to go on his show and straight up praise Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> like, he said, quote, I like Hitler. And a few minutes later, he said, I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> now, we're, that's Hitler. Like, of... You know, famous from things like murdering six million Jews and five yeah. million non-Jewish people during the Holocaust, which is about the same as the population of Georgia. Yeah. It's like murdering all of Georgia. Yeah. Hitler of World War II, during which 40 to 50 million people died. Yeah. And that Alex guy. Jones had to try to explain to Kanye West... Why Hitler was bad. Yeah. And it didn't work. <laughs> and it didn't work. <laughs> so then Gavin McGinnis, yeah. the fucking founder of Proud Boys, <laughs> the founder of Proud Boys, yeah. he tried to explain to Kanye West why Hitler was bad. Kanye. <laughs> Kanye and he handed couldn't do Kanye it either. His beer and was like, here, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, founder of white supremacist group, the Proud Boys, uh, was was defending liberalism <laughs> relative to to fucking Kanye when yeah. Kanye was calling for Jewish people to quote forgive Hitler, and and went on to say shit like, Jews should work for Christians. I'll hire a Jewish person in a second if I knew they weren't a spy, and I could look through their phone and follow through their house and have a camera all in their living room. <laughs> So literally, big brother for Jewish people. Exactly. Like, like I want big brother fuck? for Jewish people. <laughs> we, like, like... What? Like, what the fuck? We have seen yeah. this before. This is, like, Hitler. Yes. I mean... Black Hitler. <laughs> this is a fucking Dave Chappelle bit. Yeah. This. Yeah, it's the black white supremacist. Yeah. Like... <laughs> like, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? I mean, he he went on to say that uh, Jewish people were responsible for Hitler's reputation. Uh, Counterpoint, no, they're not. (laughs) No, it's classic victim blaming. Yeah, exactly. But like, he, he, I mean, he, he went on to say, quote, we make our reputations and that was made by Jewish people. But some of it. It's incorrect. Also, the Holocaust was not the only Holocaust. So for them to take that and claim, we have abortion right now. That's eugenics. That's genocide. That's a Holocaust that we're dealing with right now. So because Jewish people control the majority of media, along with the banks, along with real estate, along with malls... So, like, not only is he anti-Semitic, he's fucking incomprehensible as he tries to explain it. Like, he, he, he goes from... The Holocaust was not the only Holocaust, to abortion was the Holocaust, to Jews control the media and banks and real estate. And it's malls, apparently. Which, which which there aren't really who goes to malls anymore yeah. anyway? <laughs> and like how do Jewish people control malls? And how does that control anything? Yeah. Like like <laughs> who keeps giving this guy a fucking microphone? Like it's just absolutely absurd. He is just the worst of the worst. Yeah. 
this was after Gavin McGinnis tried to point out to Kanye West that Hitler has a historically bad reputation. It's like, and he's like, yeah, well, that's only because of the Jewish people. It's like, yeah, it's because he killed the Jewish yeah, people. It's an earned one. It's he a very, it. it's a really fucking earned one. I can't and believe if you wanna, we have to say that. <laughs> yeah. And if you're, if your point is like, so Holocaust is not the only Holocaust that's happened. You're, you mean like, it's not the only genocide that's happened. Did you mm. seriously just all genocides matter this? Jesus. Fuck you man. just all genocides mattered this shit. Mm. Like, yes, other genocides exist. Anybody who commits a genocide is bad. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking abortion's crazy. not genocide though yeah we should yeah we should be that's, clear. that's that's another important it. point yeah abortion nor is, is not it, genocide. Nor is it eugenics by de- you know but it's not eugenics by definition by, yeah it's not eugenics by definition yeah. has it been used sure as eugenics in the past sure when it's yeah. forced that's why we're pro-choice yep. we don't think it should be forced <laughs> <laughs> man it's like i feel so bad for kanye if he wasn't really? such a piece of shit, I would feel really bad. Because could you okay. imagine being inside that fucking brain? Yeah. What a fucking mess. Could you yeah. like could you imagine all just like the concepts jumbled up in there that make no fucking sense? Yeah. Just like pouring out of your mouth? Jesus. And I would just like to point out, and I know I've probably said this on the pod before, but I always didn't like him. Yeah. Even in high school before he I mean, when he was only really nuts instead of yeah. really really fucking nuts that that's i already didn't like him because like i i remember seeing this weird radio interview where he went off on some dude saying like you don't got the answer and i was like dude what it was the weirdest thing like this guy this guy was just talking to him and he just goes off on him and i'm like dude you're you're rich what do you have to scream about like calm <laughs> calm the hell down i'm um, but but look look one thing I will say is that there is clearly something going on with his mental health, and I am a I'm a big advocate for mental health care. I, yeah, I am sure, and he could get some, and I I want him to get the help that he needs. But that does not excuse this shit. Yeah, exactly. All right? exactly. Mental health can sometimes amplify the feel like paranoia can sometimes amplify the feelings that we already have or take away the filter, but like it does not excuse the fact that he is straight exactly. up praising Hitler. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hitler exactly. probably had some mental health issues. Uh, yeah. Hitler definitely had some he mental health issues. Mass murderer. Yeah. That sure. does not excuse any of it. Exactly. Exactly. It is horrible for him and because of him. Like, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Now, I feel like the rest of this is probably going to feel like weak sauce compared to Kanye West. <laughs> I'm wondering if we, we shouldn't have started with Kanye Except West. Except we're scaling up on power and influence, even if true. we're scaling down moderately on that fucking nutsoness. <laughs> that is true. Hey, that brings us to Gavin McGinnis. Yeah. So we don't like Gavin McGinnis. One thing that happened was there is a, left, a leftist streamer named Hassan Piker who... I will say he's not my favorite leftist commentator, Mm -hmm. you know, not saying I hate him. He often says stuff that I agree with, but he's also said some really fucked up shit in the past that I really don't like. But that being said, I am absolutely with him on this particular story. Mm -hmm. So he was streaming. He was live streaming the conversation between Kanye West and Gavin McGinnis. And he got banned for copyright infringement, for doing that. Because Gavin McGinnis was actually, like, actually purposely sicked a bunch of his followers on Hassan Piker Mm -hmm. and was able to get him banned. Now, the interesting thing is that most of the time, there, so there is an official rule about how much of certain clips you're allowed to use before it gets, before it can be taken down as copyright. But there seems to be this understanding among a lot of, commentators a lot of news organizations that when it comes to reaction videos you don't do that hmm. all right even if it's someone you disagree with you don't do that sure because it's, it's not a like free... you're it's not like you're like getting in the way of their copyright it's still clearly yeah. their material it's yeah. just being on it's on your show and you're making material out of it it's not like you're yeah. stealing anything exactly so it's like 
if the person had just taken your video and put it on their own sure. and like in order to get extra views, like that would be one thing. Like mm. that would be shitty. You know, I, I would understand wanting to, that to be taken down. But if it's just they are watching your video and putting their own commentary on that, yeah. like that in principle, I would say is free speech. Mm -hmm. All right. So Gavin McGinnis was actually on Alex Jones and he was talking about how he got Hassan Piker banned. Now, Hassan Piker's immediate response was, uh, dude, you're the free speech warrior. Yeah. <laughs> like his, the name of Gavin McGinnis's network is, uh, like censored TV. Yeah. <laughs> which by the way, that's pretty fucking pretentious. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but like, that's the name of it. Now, the yeah. point of course he's trying to make is like, this is where I can say what I want yeah, and this, you can't yeah. censor me. Exactly. You know? So his entire network is based on the it is based on the idea, the principle of free speech. And Hassan Piker rightly pointed out that you who claim to love free speech got me banned. Yeah. And so Gavin McGinnis was was talking about this on Alex Jones's show. And he specifically said, yeah, that's because I'm a hypocrite and I don't like you. <laughs> Dude, you just. Did you just that's gave up the whole game that he's deserves though like that at least he's honest <laughs> but like that <laughs> you just gave up the whole game yeah you exactly. just told everybody who you are yeah like you just told everybody that you have no principles that yep. you're not a principled person you just told everybody that you're a shyster yeah you just told everybody that you're a charlatan mm -hmm. that you don't care about any of this all right that you'll talk about free speech but as soon as it's something that like that gives you feelings sure you want it taken down, all yeah. right? As soon as it's done by someone that you don't like, like, you want it taken down. The principle of free speech is not that I want to amplify or I, rather I want to allow the voices of people that agree with me. You are only principled on free speech if you believe that the people who disagree with you should also have a platform, should sure. also be able to say that. That is what it means to believe in free speech. Yeah. So you don't believe in free speech. Your entire fucking premise, your entire identity, your your TV network is complete horseshit. And you did it in that with that one fucking action. And you admitted it. And the thing is, you don't care. Yeah. Because you never cared about any of this because you're a charlatan. Yep. And probably a racist. That you probably were honest about. I, I, he is a racist. <laughs> he founded Proud Boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so scaling up from there, <laughs> let's talk about. I, I was going back and forth about doing Marjorie Taylor Green next or Trump next. I think yeah. it's Trump because not only it's is Trump. he slowly losing his grip on reality, yeah. he's also slowly losing his grip on the Republican Party. That is true. That so is true. Let's so talk I, about, I, yeah. Let's talk about this motherfucker. So <sighs> there has been a bunch of reporting uh, about you know, the idea that Trump called for the termination of the Constitution in a post that he made on his failing blog, Troops, Truth Social. Yeah. And I call it failing blog pejoratively. I know it's supposed to be a social media network. It's just a piece of shit. Okay. So, it's just a failing blog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, of course, people care about this because the Republican Party claims to be the party of the Constitution and America yeah. and the founding fathers. The strict constitutionalists. Exactly. So if he actually did call for the termination of the Constitution, that would be pretty bad. Some might yeah. say even, you know, disqualifying or something. Yeah. And if you were a principled Republican, that would make you turn on him. Yeah. Like immediately. But if of you course, were principled. But of course, the liberal media mm. has blown his words completely out of proportion. So let's go. Once to the again. Once, once again. again. They've done it by doing one one by making one fatal mistake. Actually quoting him. Exactly. <laughs> so he wrote, quote, Do you throw out the presidential election of 2020 and declare the rightful winner? Or do you have a new election? A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. Jeez, you <laughs> sound a lot suspiciously like Trump calling for the abandonment of the Constitution yeah. in order to make him president again by fiat. Yeah, it does seem it, a lot. It sounds like suspiciously it. like that because that's literally what he said. 
<laughs> no, uh, and I think I don't know, Nathan. I think maybe what he's really saying is that what matters is not what's written in the Constitution, mm. because we know Trump can't read, yeah. uh, or even you know, or even what's like you know captured conceptually in the Constitution. It's about the intent, you know, which of exactly. course the scholars who wrote the Constitution, the incredible geniuses who wrote the Constitution, could never have captured in their own writing because Trump represents, as a stable genius, proof that geniuses can't read or write. <laughs> <laughs> so really he's just claiming that he's just got a secret window into what the founders truly and, intended. And apparently he really can't read because this reporting... Like, what he's referencing is the Twitter files, which we'll talk about in the mm -hmm. second segment. Yeah. By no means is that what it says, though. Yeah. It, it's like, like, it's like at all. unrelated to a corrupt or fraudulent election at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's literally just about internal disagreements with a private company. Yeah. That, like, that is nothing to do with the government. Absolutely nothing to do with the government. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and and we'll, we'll, we'll go through that more in depth later, but... God, here's the thing, though. I just want to point out that at no point has Trump ever been for the Constitution. Yeah. Let's not forget, all right? And I feel like we probably have forgotten because there's this was, this was like conservatively uh, 30,000 Trump scandals ago. <laughs> um, let's not forget that time that he specifically said that we should be killing the families of suspected terrorists like let's not forget that time he said that uh let's not forget when he said when he advocated for throwing flag burners in prison mm -hmm. which is blatantly against the constitution um let's not forget about the fact that he the moment he was sworn into office he was in violation of the emoluments clause mm -hmm. because he had hotels in uh he was in literally DC. making money <laughs> making money from foreign diplomats, yeah. Yeah. from foreign officials. Like, yeah. he, he was trying to build a hotel in Russia. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, all those, uh, you know, how we saw all those images of like papers attempting to be flushed down the toilet. If you look really closely, you can see the Constitution. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My, my big question about this for Trump is like, who the fuck is he talking about? Who yeah. would terminate these rules and laws of the Constitution? Yeah. Like, it's not like we just have a bunch of powers just like hanging out there in the ether, right? Like, yeah. you, it's not like so they're not just up for grabs. Like, if if there is a power, it's someone is endowed with it. Yeah. And in this case, that there there is that power. You can change laws. You can even change the Constitution. The power is endowed with Congress. Yeah. So they could, but they haven't. So what the fuck is he whining about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, the the most interesting part of it is the Republican reaction to this. Mm. So I'm just going to, I want to go ahead and summarize what the Republican reaction to this has been um, in just a few seconds. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to summarize it. <laughs> That's hilarious. To be fair, Trump clarified a couple days later what he really meant mm. he said quote the fake news is actually trying to convince the american people that i said i wanted to terminate the constitution this is simply more disinformation and lies <laughs> so it's your fucking words trump's position <laughs> which, which is not at all clarified by his denial of his position is that he wants to terminate the Constitution, but thinks no one should report about it? Or yeah. Kind of, it's like, this is like Alito-level doublespeak. Like, yeah. Alito's yeah. like, you know, attacks the underpinning of Roe v. Wade, saying there's no right to privacy, but then says, you shouldn't interpret this to mean that there isn't a right to privacy and that it doesn't exist for other things like gay marriage yeah. and interracial marriage. So Trump's yeah. just saying... We should terminate the articles of the Constitution to make him president, but nothing in that statement should be interpreted to mean <laughs> that he's calling for the termination of the Constitution. <laughs> buddy, he's buddy, buddy. Nuts. Yeah, he's just crazy. I, yeah. yeah. Right. It's just so blatant. 
He's such All a right. piece of shit. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on to another blatant level of crazy. Yeah. Uh, Marjorie Taylor, Jewish space lasers green. Mm. Yep. God. I, I mean, there, there's two really weird things that she said. And you know what's funny? When I first heard about this story, I didn't realize that the, uh, the, the speech that she gave that's been blowing up mm-hmm. was uh, she was addressing an audience for the, the New York Young Republican Club. Uh, and she was she was receiving the Richard Nixon award. <laughs> what the fuck? No way. What? They have one you, of those. You have, an, you have a Richard Nixon award? Richard Nixon award. <laughs> the guy that That's like was awesome. a notorious criminal who resigned in disgrace. That's the Republican president that you want to like name this award off of. I mean, what that is so fucking funny that's like having a jefferson davis award (laughs) (laughs) that's so fucking funny wow wow so already like the people in the audience are i mean already i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you (laughs) yeah they're on nixon's side (laughs) they're on nixon's side yeah so so she said quote then January 6 happens, and next thing you know, I organized the whole thing along with Steve Bannon here. And I'll tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. Not to mention, it would have been armed. That's not something to brag about. Exa- yeah, I don't really think that, like... If we had done insurrection, it would have been more violent is quite yeah. the brag that she's hoping for. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of you kind of just really insulted Republicans. And, and keep in mind, remember what the goal of January 6th was. It was to overthrow the government. Mm-hmm. So she is saying she would have done a better job of overthrowing the government. Yeah, exactly. She would have succeeded in overthrowing the government. Yeah. And, like, just totally missing the fucking point, which is, like, the whole fucking point of this criticism of of people like her and Steve Bannon and, and Josh Hawley and all those folks, which is, you may not have been in the crowd, but you inspired it. And you're, like, you were out front, like, calling for something similar to this to happen. You were you were calling yeah. for Mike Pence not to certify the election. You were, and you were, you also, were doing this. She was also giving tours to people who would would later come back to the Capitol and take a shit in it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like she was You're giving tours part of this before group. the actual insurrection. Yeah. You're a part of this group. Yeah. You know, you might not have been actually marching with them, but you were clearly involved and you clearly helped incite it by spreading lies and disinformation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean they were literally calling for things like like Josh Hawley was like calling for things like this before yeah. they went into session. And that's Absolutely. not even the weirdest thing that she said. <laughs> I don't even know how it's possible. <laughs> like the weirdest thing that she said was um, she was she was she actually she made a point about a problem that is truly facing America. Like the the big issues that Congress really needs to take action on that uh, a, a lawmaker like her needs to spend time talking about in committees. And that, of course, is sex toys. Yeah, fair enough. That is so she a said, big that is the big throbbing issue facing America. Yeah. So <laughs> she said, quote, by the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target and CVS nowadays. I don't even know how we got here. This is the state we're living in right now. We got here because freedom. Also, I didn't know that. How did you know that? Yeah, right. She was like, <laughs> I mean, kudos to you. Sure. You know, for yeah. knowing that. Yeah. I didn't know that. All, but to be fair. <laughs> MTG, anything's a butt plug if you try hard enough. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> don't take don't take butt plug advice from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> really don't. Really don't. Really don't. Really don't. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but yeah, was, like that's fucking ridiculous. Like what? Like what? She her she's another brain that is just like a mixed up like cocktail. Yeah. Also, I'd just like to point something out. They sell guns at Walmart. Hmm. And, you know, I, I am fairly pro-gun. I've, I've said that before. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to say, like, you know, 
like guns should be taken out of Walmart or, or whatever. Sure. What I am saying is I don't think it's unreasonable to say that sex toys should be more readily available than guns, yeah. you know? And apparently she believes the opposite, which, I mean, imagine that, like a, a tool of pleasure versus a tool of destruction. You yeah. think the tool of destruction is the one that more people should have their hands on, that more people should be able to get their hands on. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, that's fucking crazy. That's just weird. It's weird. But I do have a counter argument based on logic. And that is okay. this, Nathan. Based on my earlier point, that anything's a butt plug if you try hard <laughs> enough. Therefore, there are more butt plugs in the world than guns. Oh, God. Because a butt plug cannot be a gun. But Marjorie Taylor Greene, a gun can be a butt plug. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. Do not do that. Do not do if that. If you're listening, I know you shop for them at CVS, Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> shop for them at Walmart instead. Oh, God. Your favorite kind. <laughs> no, do not do that. Yeah, my... Yeah, my, my brother my brother used to work in a hospital and he told me some stories. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> what a weird conversation. <laughs> like just the amount of crazy shit that has happened in the last two weeks by people that have national platforms that are observed by millions of people. Like yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Unfortunately, we do have one more. And yeah. I think in some ways it's a little bit more of a serious note mm. and a little bit more of a freaky note. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, Kirsten Cinema. Yeah. We got to talk about Kirsten Cinema. We said shit conservatives say. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that is, includes yeah. her. <laughs> that absolutely yeah. does include her. To be fair, I'm just happy that she's coming to identify as her truer self. So she came out. Uh, as an independent, <laughs> which we yeah. knew that she was, um, and is officially leaving the Democratic Party and is trying to cast this as her being, you know, an independent person, nonpartisan, not beholden to, you know, party politics and all that stuff. And she said, quote, I've never really fit into any party box. I've never really tried. I won't want to. Removing myself from the partisan structure not only is true to who I am and how I operate, I also think it'll provide a place of belonging for many folks across the state and the country who also are tired of partisanship. Which sounds good. Yeah, I'd just like to point something out. She's not entirely incorrect. No. Because she used to be in the Green Party. Yeah. <laughs> she used to yeah. be in the Green Party. And look, She's an independent if at heart. she was... Dis if she was deciding to be an independent because the Democrats in a lot of ways are structurally corrupt mm -hmm. and you don't want to be involved in that or because they often uh, allow their politics to skew them more to the right. Like, let me let me let me just point out some important characteristics about the two other independents that are currently in the Senate. Mm -hmm. One of them is, of course, Bernie Sanders. Now. I would like to point something out that Bernie Sanders does. When there is a primary, he runs in the primary mm -hmm. as a Democrat. Yeah. And then when he gets it, when he wins the nomination, he doesn't accept the nomination. And the reason why he does that is so that he doesn't have a spoiler effect. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so basically... He's doing that to say, all right, do the Democrats, do the Democratic voters in Vermont want to vote for somebody else? We're going to give them a chance to do that. Yeah. All right. He doesn't accept it, which means that he is still the only other choice because mm -hmm. like the Democrats don't end up running the whoever might have come in second place or whatever. Yeah. It makes it so there's not going to be a spoiler effect. All right. For, for in, in any way. Mm -hmm. All right. So the other one is Angus King and he is in Maine. Now, I don't. I don't know the specifics of the story behind him, but I would like to point out that at least right now, Maine has uh, a ranked choice system. Yeah, gotcha. So, so no spoiler effect. So no spoiler effect either. The reason why Kirsten Cinema has decided to become an independent is because Democrats in Arizona fucking hate her. <laughs> and they hate her for very good reasons. And we'll go over that in just a second. Yeah, because she's not independent at all, yeah. in fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if she were primaried, polling has shown that she would get her ass kicked. Yeah. So the reason why she's doing this is because she wants to 
take that possibility away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means that if the Democrats run somebody, then they're risking handing over the Senate seat to a Republican. Exactly. She's doing this to cover her own ass. Exactly. It's totally just gaming in order to skip the primary so that she's not subject to the more liberal voters in the state, but threatens to, to pull away the independent voters that lean Democrat and therefore hand it's, 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 it's just, it's shooting the hostage. That's yeah. exactly what she's trying to do. And let me just remind you for her to call herself independent to, to the point that Michael was trying to make earlier, she's not independent. She yeah. is completely bought and paid for by moneyed interests. Exactly. And you can, you can easily look it all up on open secrets. Mm -hmm. All right. So when she originally was running, she was running on renegotiating pharmaceutical prices. She gets in office. She's still talking about it. Bill goes up. Provision goes up to, to renegotiate pharmaceutical prices in the original Build Back Better. And then, again, in the reconciliation bill that did end up actually passing the, yep. the Inflation Reduction Act. But in the original one, she was paid a ton of money from pharmaceutical companies. And suddenly, that, like, that same week, or it might have been like a week after, she comes out against <laughs> renegotiating pharmaceutical prices. That is called bribery. Yeah. All right? That yeah. is called bribery. She had an opportunity to close the carried interest loophole, something that didn't, doesn't help her state at all, would make the United States, like Treasury Department, much more money, would help our budget a lot, and the only people that it you know, would affect are the richest people making millions of dollars for no fucking reason. And she was like, ooh, she got a bunch of money from hedge funds and financial organizations, and then all of a sudden, boom, against it. That yeah. was the one thing that was a sticking point for her on uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, that she got taken out of the bill because she was going to kill it if it wasn't for taking out a provision that would prevent something that exclusively helps the richest people in the country. Yeah. And also, let's not forget about that time that she voted against raising the minimum wage to a living wage with that curtsy. <laughs> like the, hey, look at this. Fuck the middle class. Yeah, exactly. She like sucks. She and is so terrible. The she whole is point, corrupt. Yeah, the whole thing is like that I find just so laughable is is like she's trying to cast this as like her principles. Yeah. And we know that it is clearly just political gamesmanship and we know that she doesn't have any principles. Yeah. Yeah. She used to be in the Green Party and then she became a little bit more moderate and then she just became a conservative. Mhm. Mm and it's not because she had some ideological awakening. It's because she got bribed. Yeah. Now, here, here's the thing. I'm okay with having an ideological disagreement with people, even if it's sure. somebody in power. I'm okay with that. We can have an ideological disagreement. I might say that your beliefs are terrible. I might criticize them or chastise them, but I'm not going to, like, I do actually try not to target your own motivations. Sure. Right? I, I really try not to do that. Yeah. But your motivations are clear. Yeah. You got bribed and you're giving people a return on their investment. Yeah. You're a corrupt piece of shit. It's not an ideological disagreement. It's just you like money. Yeah, I think actually you know what? Now that I think about it, I think she does have a principle. I think she does have an ideology. And it's this. Money please. 